Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. My name is Laura Bolio, and I'm the VP of Marketing here at Holista Plan. I'll be co-hosting today with the infamous Debbie Taylor. So if this is your first webinar with us, welcome aboard. You're in for an absolute treat. And if you're returning again, welcome back. We are absolutely thrilled to have you. Our goal, as always, is to bring you the maximum value possible. And today we're talking all about tax planning for the 99%. Yes, the session will be recorded. Yes, it will be emailed out after the webinar. If you have questions, please drop them into the Q&A and we'll answer them. If not, during this webinar, we'll answer them in a follow-up email. With that, it is my absolute great pleasure to introduce my good friend, Debbie Taylor, or as we call her here at Holistic Plan, Queen Debbie. Debbie <laughs> is the founder, wealth advisor, and lead tax planner at Taylor Financial Group, a full-service, woman-owned wealth management firm. She is a highly sought after industry speaker and she leads our Holistic Plan Masterclass where hundreds of folks tune in each month to unlock the secrets to tax planning success. And Debbie, I have to say, I've had a number of people come up to me. So today, Debbie and I are at the Carson Conference and I've had a number of people come up to me and tell me your Masterclass series is and how it's really elevated their tax planning practice within their firms, which is no surprise. It happens at every conference, but I just love to share that. <laughs> So is that is that good? Is that my cue? Yeah, yeah. Just, just telling <laughs> so, you how much we love having you. <laughs> I love that. And people are coming up to me and uh, also thanking me, telling me that Holista Plan and my masterclass have changed their life. And uh, and I love that, right? It's really, it's really gratifying. So uh, like Laura mentioned, we're both down here at muggy, rainy, uh, sunny Florida. It all goes on at one time. And uh, it's been great. We were in the Magic Kingdom on Sunday night till midnight at uh, Mickey's Halloween party. I highly recommend it. And Animal Kingdom yesterday. But yes, I am going to sessions. And so um, anyway, it's been great. Laura and I are in the same wing of the hotel. So uh, we are vibing. Uh, we're vibing together here. So anyway, welcome future Holista Plan um, customers. And great to see you. So the idea behind today is doing tax planning uh, basically for all of your clients or most of your clients. And conceptually, that's not the way it's been done, right? Conceptually, there were two, really two ways that you did tax planning. It was either reactive, right? Where a client would show up. By the way, if you see this like weird top, you know, I always wear a suit jacket, um, but we're down in Florida and I obviously came up from the conference. So anyway, um, I hope I don't get any demerits for uh, not wearing my suit jacket today. Anyway, so tax planning was done really in one of two ways. One way was reactive, where the client would show up and be like, hey, I'm getting divorced or I'm selling a business. Can you look at my tax return? You know, tell me what's going to happen to my tax bracket. And you would probably do something manually, um, be like, yeah, it looks like your tax bracket's going to go up or your tax bracket's going to go down. It would be some like back of the envelope calculation. Maybe it's a little chart on your desk and you'd look to see what their AGI would be, right? Something along those lines. Um, and then the other way tax planning was typically done is you say, oh, well, I'm going to do this for my favorite clients, right? I'm going to do this for my like top five clients or my A plus clients. And what technology allows us to do is break away from the old, old paradigms and actually perform the services at a very high uh, quality for a lot of people. And the way I think about it is, you know, a hundred years ago before cars were invented, if you were going to try to go cross country from New Jersey to New York, uh, to New York, New Jersey or New York to California, you could maybe do that trip once in your lifetime. You might not even survive it, okay? Um, I read a book, Go West for Giraffes or whatever, and it was you know right after cars were invented and it was like truly dangerous to try to drive cross country. If anybody's read that book, um, there were uh, folks that would attack you, the car would break down, you're in the middle of nowhere, interstate highways weren't built, you get the picture, okay? I mean, it's like truly dangerous. You get held up, like truly dangerous. Um, and now you can go cross country every week if you really wanted to, because you could go in an airplane. And so it's the same concept here, is that before Holista Plan, you couldn't do tax return reviews, provide thoughtful analysis, right? You couldn't do that for more than a few clients. It wasn't scalable. It's tough work. I call it yeoman's work. Um, it's prone to errors. Let's be honest about it. Now with Holista Plan, you can do so much more at this high quality level. And so the question is, and I'm challenging you, why wouldn't you, right? Like, why wouldn't you perform these services if you can do it in a way 
that's scalable and really benefiting your clients. And so high level, that's what we're gonna talk about today and how to do it. The other thing I wanna mention is stick around to the end because I have two things to mention that will absolutely be worth your while, okay? So stick around to the end, um, two building, business building techniques essentially that are pretty much brand new because the IRS released new regulations on this and you absolutely um, need to know these two things. Okay, let's hop in. So uh, here is what we're going to talk about today, um, walking you through some of this and, um, and leveraging the dashboard with Holista Plan, which is actually really cool because it's using Holista Plan then from a more enterprise approach. And in my conversations with Roger, who is the founder of Holista Plan and is super passionate about helping all of us become great financial advisors, and Roger and I are completely aligned in that approach to our profession, um, one of the things that Holistic Plan is going to continue then to build out is this enterprise management. And when I say that, I mean that not just like, oh, we have this great tool and we can do this great analysis for client X, right? But now Holistic Plan is going beyond that. And they're saying, how can you organize your book? How can you in so that you could search and say, hey, we want to identify all clients that are making over $400,000 a year. And Holistic Plan has built some nice dashboards to do that. And they're going to be a lot more enterprise management tools is what we call it. And that's going to be so important with taxes being top of mind, um, a new president coming in a few months, a lot of wrangling, TCJ expiring, who gets affected? Are, is it people that are making over $400,000 a year? Well, then it would be great if we could identify who those clients are within our book so that we can do outreach to them. We could do further analysis for them. So that's just one example. And again, we're gonna cover that today. Okay, so why you should perform a tax analysis for all of your clients. And so the first question is, do you perform a tax analysis for all of your clients? Oh, Laura is so good with the polls. Do you perform a tax analysis for all of your clients? And the answer is yes or no, right? Yes or no. And so we usually um, have about like 20 or 30 seconds just to keep things moving along. And then we'll get some answers. Um, and Laura usually will tell me or she'll flash the results for me. And look at this. Oh my gosh. 80% of you are not doing a tax analysis for all of your clients, okay? And 21% are. So the 21% that are doing it, like fantastic. And if I could give out like gold stars right now, you're all getting gold stars, right? The 80% that are not doing it yet, it's yet, right? Yet is the operative word. What this means for you is that there is so much opportunity now. Um, you get Holista Plan and you start performing these services for your clients and provide additional value in these relationships as a, just a starting point, as a baseline. And then all of the other things that you can do as far as closing larger prospects, uh, differentiating yourself from the competition, right? All of that good stuff. So I see all opportunity here, right? Good, exactly. Okay. So let's go through just some reminders because I don't need you to take my word for it. So let's go to the data, right? Those of you who know me know that I'm like a total data hound. And so what we see here from an Angie um, Herber survey is that tax planning, retirement planning are the top services that clients want with over $250,000 in household assets. And so we see, if you look at the top three, and I call this my trifecta, it's tax planning, retirement planning, and investment management. And you're like, hey, Debbie, we got it, right? We're doing our investment management. Of course you are, right? Of course you're doing that, right? You're doing financial planning, right? Some form of it. But how many of you are really doing the tax planning, right? Well, we just saw on the data that you know only about 20% of you are doing that. And so this is one of the most in-demand services for your higher net worth prospects and clients. Think about it. And yet so many of you are not doing it. So we're seeing an execution gap there and we wanna fill that execution gap. Here again is another way to be thinking about this from the Herber survey. So again, those top right, uh, the three right, those are our trifecta, investment management, financial planning, and tax planning. And again, you know, we see 
we see the gap is what I call it, right? Mind the gap is we've got um, the top organic growing firms, okay? Um, saying they are offering these services. And yet when we're asking the clients what they're getting, very few clients say they're actually getting it. So we have almost 100% of firms saying that they're doing it. And yet we have less than half of the clients saying that they're getting it. And so part of that then is we've got to communicate better. We've got to build out our service calendar, right? So there's a lot that goes into sort of building this infrastructure around providing tax planning. And Holista Plan has covered that in my monthly uh, webinars for subscribers, where how to build out your service calendar, what to be offering um, to the clients, when to be doing it, what emails you should be sending, right? What your follow-up is. Like we are including all of that in the subscriber webinars that we do every single month. So if you're like, hey, I'm really interested in doing this, but how do I go about it? Like you sign up for Holista Plan, they have almost two years worth of webinars that I have done covering all of these topics. And then every month I'm doing additional webinars that we advertise what the topics are and literally walk you through step-by-step step what needs to be done. And by the way, I've been speaking to Roger um, every month we have strategy calls and he is so excited because he's rolling out even more things for 2025. And so anybody who is like on the fence or not 100% sh please consider it because there is so much there already and there is so much to come. Okay, so this is from CEG um, Insights. So another consulting firm. And you see here again, amazingly, but very similar data. As you look, um, investment management, tax planning, um, and you see there services desired by these wealthy investors. And again, 90%, right? 90% of investors, they want investment management, they want tax planning, they want estate planning. Um, but then you see, are the uh, investors actually receiving those services? And you see that only 25% say that receiving tax planning. So again, whether we're looking at Angie Herbers, whether we're looking at CEG, you're seeing this gap where advisors are out there pretending that they're providing these services. And yet you see clients are saying, nah, I don't, I, I'm not even getting that. I'm not getting that. And so we've got to be better um, at building out the services, communicating it, providing the services and, um, and helping clients understand what we're doing for them. And again, um, Holistic Line does a great job of that. And my final note on this is, you know, bringing in new clients. And what we see over and over again with the data, and this is from the Schwab um, RIA benchmarking study, and what we see over and over again is 45% of our new assets come from client referrals, right? 45%. We see about 10% from centers of influence. And then you see 30% is from, you know, regular marketing activity. And so what we want to do is service the heck out of our existing clients because that is a great way for us to get new clients on board. And that's again, we're doing this tax planning for our existing clients can be so powerful in the growth of our firm because we're getting referrals. And then of course, the tax planning is such a big help in competitive situations or helping to close those larger clients that are looking for value, that are comparing you against the competition. And I can tell you right now, the competition ain't doing this. We just saw that in the data, right? And so this is a way for you to win and you're gonna win bigger clients. And so again, lots of good reasons to be doing this work. And like I said before then, performing the tax analysis has never been easier. So it's easy peasy for us, right? Easy peasy. And I've got Jen here on my team and we're gonna go through um, some live demos, show you like what to do, what product you get and literally it takes seconds. And so years ago when we first started using Holistic Plan, uh, my intern was responsible for that. Now, five years later, um, you know, he works with Holista Plan. He knows it like the back of his hand, but he was the one that was assigned to this. So you could assign, you know, an assistant, an intern, a really junior person. It is that easy and client friendly to use, which is great. Are you requesting tax returns from clients throughout the year, right? Or are you doing it even once during the year? And let's see. So again, we usually have like, you know, 30 seconds on the polling and I'm dying to see what the answer is. And 
uh, Tom, we are getting to how the tool works. So don't worry. Uh, we have demos, we have screenshots, we have lots of great material. So nothing to worry about there. Yes, so I have 66% of you uh, requesting the tax returns from clients throughout the year. So that's pretty impressive, but it, it makes me a little bit curious then because 66% of you are collecting the tax returns, but only 20% of you are actually doing that tax planning. That was from the previous poll. I'm not sure if the wording threw you off because we asked if you're doing tax planning for all of your clients. And I don't know if that threw off some of you where you're actually doing it, but maybe not for all of them. Um, and I'm not trying to get too technical on it, but again, you know, if so many of us are collecting tax returns, I feel like those numbers should be somewhat consistent, right? If you know, 60 to 70 percent um, of us are collecting tax returns, then 60 70 percent of us should be doing tax planning for the vast majority of our clients, right? Maybe not every single client; they only have ten thousand dollars with you invested, but you get the point. All right, so let's move on then from that. All right, so here is the tax return outreach schedule. And basically what you see is there are 30 outreaches um, throughout the year and they escalate. So now we're gonna have the highest escalation because it's in September, October 15th is the last day tax returns are due. And so you'll see here, we send out monthly announcements. Um, we send out weekly uh, requests for the tax return um, once a month or maybe twice a month in our weekly newsletter. And then you see personalized emails and you see, um, you see phone calls in over this next couple of weeks. And so we have action plans, uh, but, but you see here, like here's our schedule all year, setting that expe expectation, communicating with the clients. And here is our tax return request that we use. We have used this format for years. If it ain't broke, uh, don't fix it. And so this has worked really effectively. It's sort of cutesy, but it makes the point. Um, we say there's a number of ways you can get this tax return to us. We can set up a vault for you. Um, you know, you can send it to us electronically. But the point is, you've got to get this tax return to us so that we can do this very valuable work for you. And then we've got to track the tax returns that come in because we have all those follow-ups. And so here is just a simple spreadsheet um, that I'm you know, showing you that you could follow. Or again, you could set up an action plan in your software and you could print you know, or look at a dashboard that way. Um, so lots of ways for you could track this. But what we do here is we track the tax return coming in and then we create a deadline of seven to 10 days later of when we want to send out the tax report to the client um, from Holista Plan. And so we wanna, again, you know, what gets measured gets done and you wanna be tracking all of this. And so with that, then I want to turn it over to Jen about leveraging the dashboard um, and showing you sort of, you know, just hopping into the tool and exploring it. Jen has been with us for five years. She's totally amazing. And she does a lot of my advanced planning work at the firm. And so with that, then Jen's going to hop in and we're going to hop actually into the program and demo um, aspects of the program for you. So Jen, you're up. Thank you, Debbie. All right. Let me just... Stop sharing this dashboard. All right. So aside from doing the tax analysis, Holista Plan's really good about organizing all the data that you input into the software, um, which is super valuable. So when you go into Holista Plan, you'll come to the main dashboard, you know, showing you all the webinars and all anything new inside the software, which is great. And the household tab is really where a lot of the information lies. And it works very similarly to an Excel spreadsheet where you can filter all of the different columns and information to um, sort through the data that you're looking for. Um, so it has critical information like, of course, the household names, the state where the clients live, AGI, marginal tax bracket, um, based off of the most recent tax return that's inputted in here. So of course, 2023 is our most recent year. So for the people that it's not showing the AGI and marginal bracket for, it's because the 2023 tax return hasn't been uploaded. Um, so that's also a very easy way for you to see that the most recent return, either you haven't gotten it yet or it hasn't been inputted into Holista Plan. So that's just a trick right there for you if you're new here. Um, and one critical thing on this page um, about inputting the client's birth dates and ages is that 
it, um, it connects to this tab right here, the age milestones, um, which is relative, of course, to their age and highlights any critical financial milestones that are either coming up or um, they're already, they've arrived. So it has different ages like social security ages, say age 62 when they first qualify, their full retirement age or age 70. There's also QCD eligible um, notifications, RMD age eligible notifications, 59 and a half. Um, so there's a lot of the key um, ages that you wanna be aware of, even Medicare age. So it really allows you to um, identify those people. And as I said, you could quickly just select one of the filters that you wanted to look at, say it's QCD eligible. Um, you click that and it will immediately sort and only select the clients that are QCD eligible. And then you could potentially do um, proactive outreach or um, you know, just communicate and have those conversations with the clients in meetings, knowing that that's something that's coming up and maybe they're not even aware of these opportunities. So yeah, let me just mention one thing about that then, right? Is I was seeing data where one of the top reasons that clients fire their financial advisor is that the financial advisor was not proactive and wasn't communicating well. And so what Holista Plan allows us to do here with this dashboard is again, if you're collecting tax returns from all of your clients, then you can upload them into the dashboard. And now you can send out proactive communications like Jen saying about QCDs or you know Medicare or social security, right? Um, it allows you to do that, which again is one of the top reasons that uh, financial advisors can get fired. And so whether it's internally triggering your product doing certain analysis, or just doing outreach and communication, this is where then it makes sense to be getting tax returns from all the clients and uploading them instead of cherry picking, you know, your top A clients or the people that ask you questions, and then you feel the need to collect the tax return and give them an answer on something. Yep, exactly. Um, so that's great. Um, a couple other things we wanted to touch on here. So um, you notice the state column here. Again, you can filter any of these and select the states of clients that you want to look at. Um, we're in New Jersey, so you'll see a lot of them have New Jersey. Um, so you could really highlight state-specific tax laws, um, which you know is part of the tax observation report, um, which I can show very quickly later as we're going to quickly touch on that. Um, so that's another great feature. And also, for example, in New Jersey, there's no estate tax, but there's an inheritance tax. So maybe you want to do um, notify your clients about that. So there's many different things you could do with simply looking at the state. Um, another key one is the AGI, as Debbie said, um, with potential tax rates changing. Um, we don't know what's going to happen with the election. Um, you, Depending on what happens, you can quickly uh, put ranges on the AGIs that you're trying to look at. So as Debbie said, the $400,000 uh, number, if you wanna just look at people like between 350 and 500, just to, or whatever number you want, um, you could quickly sort through those people who might potentially have an issue and have those conversations with them um, if needed. So- Yeah, and let me just mention, you know, it's interesting because I had a meeting today at noon and I was talking about the coming tsunami. And so between the TCJ expiring in like 15 months, between a presidential election in three months, you know, taxes are gonna be front and center. It's going to be a huge negotiation. It is literally page one or page two of the Wall Street Journal every single day. There's a huge article today um, on what the TCJ has meant for uh, clients in different counties in the United States. And they profiled wealthy counties uh, more modest uh, counties, you know, like in, um, you know, just different socioeconomic levels. But the point that I'm making is that this is completely in flux. Clients are going to have questions. And again, this is where having this dashboard can help you identify who could potentially be exposed, um, who those clients are, and, you know, how to be reaching out or thinking about it. Yep. Um, that's great, Debbie. I, I see a question here. Um, uh, just about how the bracket in terms of this client um, in California. Um, these are all just sample accounts. I was just trying to change the states to show different ones to filter um, so that you could be completely right that the 12% doesn't apply. Um, this is just all for, for the demo. So um, 
that's just wanted to answer that one very quick. Um, so another item to talk about is the marginal tax bracket a column, which is very useful, especially if you're looking at doing Roth conversions, as I saw someone um, say in the questions before, um, it can help you quickly see who's in those lower tax brackets, 10, 12, 22%, and you just wanna simply do that quick tax ma bracket management. Um, this is very, helps you easily identify those clients. Of course, you might wanna do it for other clients, but that's just a very quick way to identify the lower tax brackets. Um, as Evie said before, we have our internal processes for tracking the tax returns, but of course in Holista Plan, you can see right here, they show you the years that were uploaded and you could simply sort, I only wanna see 2023, and those will all come up and you see all this data filled in here. So very easy to do that. And um, also here, uh, the firm tags. So this is a customized column where you can use it to help you filter through clients um, with your own customized tags. So you can say something like, you can see I added here, we want to revisit this client's uh, Roth conversion in Q4. So I put that tag on these few clients. Um, then if clients are QCD forward or they're interested in QCDs every year, we typically do them. I put a tag there so you can see which clients that you want to reach out to about that. So you can really use it for anything. Um, just quickly, if you see here, if you go to manage tag list, you can quickly create one, make it a color you want and name it anything you want. So this is just another column that helps you customize in the way that works for you, um, which I think is really great. And it doesn't really limit you to the columns that are here. So that's everything on the dashboard right now. Let me just go back to the deck. Can I upload the tax return? Uh, I think that's um. Is it in here? Yeah. <laughs> can you show that or not? You can see it. Um. Yes, I can show that. So um, while we go into this next section, I just skipped through the slides. That's all everything we discussed, but just for you to refer back to. So let me show you an example of how we perform uh, the tax return analysis. So back in here. Um, so just for example, of course, these, these are all just for demo purposes, but um, I'll go into Peter and Paula Professor. Um, so they're already in here. You can go into their household by clicking their name, but if it's a new household, you just simply add them here add some of the basic information, client one, name, birthday, client two, and click create household and it will show up here. And like I said, if they're already in here, um, I'm just gonna go for these purposes into the household. So you'll see all the information at the top and then in the tax return section, you'd simply click upload tax return. You click whichever year it's for, of course, we're doing 2023. So you click 2023 and simply uh, upload the tax return from your files. And it takes uh, only a few minutes really to upload if it's a more simpler case. Sometimes, um, as it says down here, um, the results aren't that clear. So you'll have a little yellow symbol, but the team is super quick and typically it'll get uploaded within the next 10 minutes or so, unless it's a very weird tax return that's just not working, um, but very fast generally. And then once it's uploaded, you'll see that you're able to review the tax report so um, so a normal tax return takes how long to upload? A simple tax return literally could take under two minutes. Like I've, I've been on here and watching it, you know, as it's done and it's literally a minute or two. Yeah. Very quick. So basically one minute and boom, you're done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you'll get this report as I'm showing right here. Um, of course, as Debbie always talks about, we love this report. It summarizes at the top the key figures, pretty much everything you need to know about that tax year, income, AGI, deductions, total taxes paid, filing status, cap gains, um, all of that. Uh, so then you could see the different uh, sections here in the tax report, which you can completely uh, move around if you want to show different things at the top. Um, now we've had entire webinars on the tax report, mm -hmm. how to read the tax report, how to generate the tax report. And by the way, this tax report that literally takes a minute to generate and your intern could do this, your assistant could do this, this alone, you could just grab it and send it to clients. 
Okay, so we've created a lot of process around this and we've segmented clients and our top clients might get a cover letter that comes with this, but literally it, you, you're just starting out with this. You could just send this out and this would be tremendous value to your clients. Yep, and um, just to note below, these are the observations for those of you who have never seen the tax report. Um, you can go through this. And then as I mentioned before, um, if you input the state data, it'll have specific state observations as well, which can be very helpful. And when you say input state data, you mean upload the tax return? Yeah, you just have to put the state right. um, yeah, yes. in there. Yeah. So mm -hmm. like when she says upload state data, it's just telling Holista Plan that it's New Jersey mm -hmm. and exactly. uploading the tax return. To be clear, the observations at the very end, if you scroll mm -hmm. down, is this is the stuff that I was doing manually for years and always worried that I was going to be missing things. And so these observations, you can edit these, you can move them around, you can customize them, you can add to it. Um, but these, just the way they are, are great foundational items as like sort of a starting point for talking about tax planning and what to do moving forward as a financial advisor with the clients. So again, this report in and of itself is a huge value to the clients. And by the way, um, Holista Plan has updated the report and they're super excited about it. And next month, uh, we're gonna talk about the updated uh, tax report, but it's fantastic even as it is. Exactly. So just quickly, um, now that I'm thinking about it, you can see here on the tax report, it talks about carry forward losses. Um, and I forgot to mention before, um, in this household dashboard, um, you can see the carry forward loss column, um, which is super valuable because it hi highlights the amount. So, you know, if clients have really large losses, you can offset gains um, and just do a lot of tax planning work that way. Um, so this is just another great way to identify for clients. And back to the deck. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, yeah. No, it's okay. Let's, Let's just sure. demo these other 50 things. And <laughs> just to go through here, this is what we just talked about, but I just want to mm -hmm. highlight, um, I don't know if you want the 12 point tax return checklist. So this is really how we formulated our template email and the key points to be uh, talking about with the clients and how it applies to them. So in these following slides, um, as we're talking about, you should be doing the tax analysis for every client. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to have the same email for your D client as you do for your A plus client or however you segment those. Um, so we actually have four different versions of the email. I included three because um, it basically just gets shorter every time. Um, so you guys can refer back to this, um, but these are our templates. So this is for our biggest clients, A plus and A's. Um, you can see it's, the, it's um, a lot more comprehensive. Then we have the B clients. We cut down on some of the more de the detailed stuff, a um, little bit shorter. C clients, same thing. Just highlight the key items for that client, um, potential Roth conversions, if that applies. And there's an even shorter version where we literally just say, refer to the tax observation report that we attach. Let us know if you have any questions. Um, and yeah, so this just reiterates that you can be doing this for everyone. And it doesn't mean that it has to be this big thing every single time. It could just be simply attaching the tax report. Fantastic. Am I up? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Great job. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jen. All right, we've got a poll coming up and this is actually very important. So I promised you two building um, business um, things for the end. And so this poll is very important. It is are you identifying and having conversation with clients regarding their outside assets? Really, we should be renaming the poll. Do you even know about their outside assets, right? I mean, that could be another um, question we ask. But um, are you identifying having conversations about this? And so we'll give it a few seconds. And then, like I promised, the two, what I consider to be significant building business ideas that will make Holista Plan worth it just by doing that. Look at this group. We are like total overachievers here, Jen. 
86% are having these conversations. Okay, that's super impressive. I guess you guys maybe don't need me, so we can just end now, or should we continue? All right, I'm going to continue just because I can't help myself, um, because even if you're having these conversations, I feel like we might have another way to be thinking about this. And so we're going to just, um, we're going to keep moving ahead and see how my idea works with you. So for years, right, years, 25 years, I've been collecting tax returns from clients. And yes, I'm doing it because it's the right thing to do, and I'm a CPA, and I can't help myself and I have total FOMO, right? Who out there has FOMO? Um, you can say you identify yourself and we'll create a little support group, right? From the chat. Um, but the other thing I love about a tax return is it is the best financial forensic tool anywhere. I can learn so much about a client by going through their tax return, right? And who out there loves that, right? And so one of the best things in the tax return is the schedule big. And we know the schedule B is like is like footprints, right? Is the schedule B um, basically helps us to track what these clients are doing, where their money is at. And we're seeing um, on the schedule B then, this is, uh, yeah, uh, we see that on the schedule B is we have interest income. We can see then these clients who are loading up on money markets, uh, loading up on CDs, which last year is a big year for that. So maybe before that, you're like, yeah, Tina, there is no alternative. Debbie, people aren't loading up on interest bearing products, right? Until 2023. And now you've got clients who are stockpiling cash, thinking they're little geniuses because they made 5% uh, in um, bonds or, well, maybe in bonds, but more in CDs and short term stuff. Meanwhile, if they were in the market, they would have made 20, 30%, or who knows if they own NVIDIA, right? And so we've got clients who are stockpiling cash. We got to get that money back invested, okay? And, you know, back in the mix on things. And then at the bottom is our dividend income. And so they might have accounts with you, but we know they could have accounts in a number of other places. And so Holista Plan is so great because you get this. And on the tax report, it will show you all of the custodians, all of the places um, that they're holding cash or investments or what have you. And then you can have really meaningful conversations with clients, knowing for sure, because, hey, by the way, a lot of times they forget. So sometimes they're hiding it from you, but other times they just forget. And they're like, oh yeah, like we have that like $200,000 account at Merrill. Like I totally forgot about that. Well, when you look at this, you're going to see, you know, footprints, you're going to see tracks from that account. And you're gonna be like, I see like $2,000 of dividend income. And they'll be like, oh yeah, we have like $300,000 there. And I'm like, well, wouldn't it be a nice time to consolidate? And so this enables you to have like a lot more visibility into what they're doing um, and then have those conversations. So this is super valuable. And I talked to Roger and he's going to be building an entire report and tool um, around capturing this information. And again, looking at it from an enterprise perspective so that from the, from the practice standpoint, you could literally get a list of all your clients um, and the folks that are holding money away and then create you know, an action plan about how to go after that. And so that's exactly what we did. So here's the uh, tax report that shows you this client has money at Bank of America, money at Ally Bank, money at Schwab. Well, I'm okay with Schwab because I custody with Schwab. And then they have stuff at Vanguard. And so I'm like, yeah, I got to go after all this other um, all this other. And I basically taught my team how to back into the numbers. And so if you're assuming anywhere from three to 5% of interest income, when you see a dollar amount here, you can back into roughly about how much they have at these places. And depending on the level of sophistication for the client, then sometimes I'll assume they're getting the 5% because it's a real savvy client that has the time to do it. And other times I'm like, yeah, this client might not be as savvy. And so then I might assume a slightly lower interest rate, but it gets you in the zone. You know what you're talking about. And then same thing with dividends. Um, you know, again, sometimes you might have um, equities or REITs and they're paying high, higher dividend rates, but the average dividend of the S&P 500 is roughly about 2%. So generally speaking, then you can start backing into rages there as well. And then we created a whole action plan about reaching out to these clients. And by the way, we've brought in millions of dollars because of it. It's unbelievable. Um, we thought, oh, we might get some pushback. Um, people have their assets in other places, you know, sort of like for a reason that it's intentional, right? We'll ruffle feathers. Uh, no, we've reached out to people and they'll get back to us and be like, hey, what do you recommend that we do? Hey, can we set up a call on that? And literally millions of dollars have been coming in because of it. 
And so um, we are really proud of what we're calling our wallet share project. And again, like holistic plan for this reason alone, you know, pay for itself, you know, 10 times over. So this is one of my big business building um, recommendations. Okay. And then before we hop into the bonus material, I want to mention to you the other one. And so in July, um, we know the IRS uh, released guidance along with the Treasury Department on Secure Act 2.0, requiring RMDs from inherited um, IRAs. And we covered that pretty extensively uh, last month um, at our webinars. And so if you have any questions, you can dial in because uh, we covered that and we had you know almost a thousand people uh, on that call in August, no less. But one thing that is not being covered from that guidance, and it is like super buried, but, well, it's actually two things, is number one, the IRS now says that, you know that year of death RMD, the IRS now says you do not have to take it in the year of death, right? So remember the mad dash, because it had to be taken in December for a widow, um, if the, the deceased did not take the RMD. And sometimes that widow is showing up in December and you're like, my gosh, I have to take an RMD in the next like two weeks. Well, the IRS realizes that was a problem. You now have until December of the next calendar year to take that RMD. OK, so that is very cool. Um, and again, not being spoken about. But here's the other big business building idea is they also came out with guidance. And you know how a Roth 401k uh, is not subject to RMDs, right? We know that the Roth 401k is not subject to RMDs. And they basically aligned the treatment of a Roth 401k with the Roth IRA, right? Because Roth IRAs have no RMDs, obviously. And the Roth 401k did, did have the RMDs. And so that was helpful for us in getting those rollovers because we're like, hey, you've got a Roth 401k and you have to start taking RMDs on that. You absolutely don't want to do that. So you need to roll over that Roth 401k to us, right? That was a very effective uh, sales argument helped us get a lot of those Roth 401ks into our management. Then, you know, they said, oh, no RMDs on the Roth 401ks. And I'm like, great. Now all of our clients are going to want to keep their Roth 401ks, you know, established as Roth 401ks, even when they retire, right? Um, well, they came out with additional guidance. And what they said, and I'm going to read it to you because um, I want to get the, the language right, is... Accounts must be 100% Roth designated to be treated um, to be treated so that RMDs. If any portion of the account is pre-tax, right? If any portion of the account is pre-tax, then the whole plan account is subject to RMDs and the 10-year rule. Okay. So I understand what this is like because guess what? This applies to me is I have a substantial amount of money in the 401k with my business, okay? And within that 401k, some of it is Roth 401k and some of it is traditional 401k. And right now the IRS is telling me if any portion of the account is pre-tax, which it is, then the whole plan account is subject to RMDs and the 10-year rule which is exactly the opposite of what I want happening, which is why I have a Roth 401k. So I know this is real because it actually affects me. What this does is puts us back in the game again. So those clients of yours that have those, and I'm calling them hybrid 401k plans, that's not an official term. I'm calling it a hybrid 401k, but your clients that have that equivalent of a hybrid 401k, they still need to roll that Roth 401k to you um, in a Roth IRA, otherwise they're going to be subject to the RMDs and that 10-year rule, which is not what they want. So that is your second key business building rule. It is absolutely huge. You will win business this year simply because of that. And this, again, is the value that Holista Plan brings is every month we are here giving you business building ideas, um, teaching you the software, and helping you figure out how to do tax planning uh, for your clients. And so with that then, bonus material. So over the summer, we have like two or three slides left, and then we're happy to take questions. Um, over the summer, we um, sent out this announcement, and this is what we call our security project. And this is really important. More and more, we're seeing elder abuse. It's getting written up all the time. Your clients are aging. Um, and so much going on with cybersecurity, with AI, 
right? And your clients are nervous about this. They might not be talking about it, but they are fearful, right? AARP is writing about it all the time. The journal's writing about it all the time. And we all have clients who've been taken advantage of uh, with these elder scams, right? So we sent out this announcement over the summer, um, basically updating our clients on some best practices. And so it's updating their power of attorneys. Fine, you're like, yeah, we do that. It's making sure that with Schwab, that the proper forms are filed, whether it's the trusted uh, contact form or Schwab's own forms so that the um, client's relatives are able to act on their behalf. And Schwab's very particular. They want their own paperwork. So this is, this is so different. You can have clients that have a POA with an attorney and they're like, yeah, I've got my POA, I've paid my attorney $10,000. And the custodian may be like, yeah, sorry, we want our form signed. And so that's item number two. And then we created um, a safe word protocol for the clients so that we're not worried about AI um, you know, trying to impersonate our clients. And so a lot of good conversations around this. Then we also leverage the FP Pathfinders chart uh, for further information. And so um, a lot of good conversations around this. So that is our bonus content. And with that then, um, sign up today. So if you sign up with Holista Plan, here is a code, you get 10% off. And so um, ideally they'd like you signing up within the next, I think it's two weeks um, to get that code off. And um, you say Debbie Taylor, 2024, that was their idea. And so uh, anyway, that's the discount. And with that, Fortune um, favors the bold and um, happy to take uh, some questions. We have a few minutes left. All right, Debbie, thank you so much. That was awesome. Jennifer, thank you so much too. So we have some questions <clears throat> specifically about different tax strategies and scenario analysis. How do we feel about jumping into the scenario analysis tool really quickly? Sure, I got Jen here, Jenny, Jenny. All right. <laughs> um, okay, one second. <laughs> You're in the hot seat. I yeah. know. That's all right. I uh, love being in Orlando doing this from a hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. So what are the questions about yeah. scenario analysis? Just so that. Um, so the question is, can you show a sample of tax planning report after implementing different tax strategies or scenario analysis? Or how do we create an action plan as well? Yep. Okay. We see that. Okay. Okay. So as I did before going into the tax report, um, second here. And then for the scenario analysis, you'd simply scroll down and scenario analysis has its own um, column. So you could see one was created here for a charitable giving. I'm just gonna go into that quickly just to see what was here. So I think if this is probably from another webinar, um, but you actually see a Roth conversion scenario here. So let me just, um, I'm just gonna create this base case here for us so that um, we can just look at it without the Roth conversion first. So to be clear, when you're doing scenario analysis, you want to start with your base case, right? Of, hey, this is basically what's on the tax return. Um, or if you're trying to do it for 2024, it's, hey, this is what 2024 is going to look like if we don't do anything, right? This is just, this is our wages. This is our IRA distributions we don't do anything here. This is just how it's going to look. So that's the concept behind the base case. And then you see Jen setting it up and then you add a scenario. Yeah, so like Debbie said, I'm just quickly going through this. This is the base case, which we always show so that the client can refer back to it to see you know, if anything has changed from what our thinking was. And then you simply click add a scenario at the top then you copy it from your base case here so that everything else remains the same. And then you could make alterations from here. So I'll just name it auth conversion. Um, so everything is the same right now. And you see this line here that says Roth conversion. So you can simply input um, the amount you want. Um, but typically, so this client I see, I'm just gonna um, make their wages lower. Um, just to see a, a lower income case. 
And as you can see, it's very easy to edit all of this stuff in here. You just simply click into it. So, sorry, let me just, I want to see if they're in. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, 12% bracket. Um, and the really cool tool in Holista Plan is that you can solve how to maximize a tax bracket. So, that's what this button does solve for minimum or max. And it'll show you the amount of additional income that it will take to get to the next tax bracket. So you can see here, during the 12% bracket, um, it would take about $13,000 of additional income to get them into the next 22% bracket. Also shows you the um, next Medicare premium breakpoint um, in terms of the MAGI and the surcharges, which is another key thing to think about with Roth conversions and we have a lot of clients that are, you know, really concerned about that. So it's just nice to have that one as well. Let's show them that scenario analysis. Yeah. So, so the idea here then is we had the base case, then we put in solve for max, which is mm -hmm. a really cool feature as Jen is saying, because it enables you to do tax bracket management, which is saying how much can we convert while still staying in the same tax bracket. And so Holista Plan enables us to do that and then um, can we just yeah, so, to show them? So now I'll just show you really quick. So as it said, 13,000 would get them in, um, keep them in the 12% bracket. This is typically what we would show, try to keep a couple of thousand um, leeway between the next bracket, just, you know, just in case something happened. So you'll see still in the 12% bracket and you could see the additional taxes created from that. Um, you have to input some of the data, but that's why I'm showing that. And then you'll see the state taxes at the bottom. Um, so then, for example, you could play around with this more and say, okay, let's see what 50,000 does. And this is typically what I do. And then, okay, 50,000. So then I'll do solve for max again, just to, curious to see what it would take to now max out the 22. So then I'll look at it. All right, another 43,000 about until the um, 22. So see down here, verifies you're in the 22% bracket. So now if you wanted to go back and say the client actually wants to do more now, 75, because they're willing to be within the 22% bracket, you can input that very quickly. And we've done this in client meetings as well, because they want to see, you know, different numbers and you could do it very fast. So here, here you'll see 22% bracket, but then you'll see that increase in taxes. Yeah. Now you're not going to get a tax report on this necessarily, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because it's not the tax return. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to see is the scenario where we can do what? Four scenarios, five scenarios, right? Yeah. It only prints four on if you want to PDF it or print it out. It only holds four, but it can hold like five or six. Okay. So yeah. you could run side by side, mm -hmm. like we could create like almost like an Excel spreadsheet, but obviously a lot better um, side by side, a number of analysis that we look at. And then from here, we can say to the client, oh, if we did, I'm not sure what the Roth yeah, This was 75,000. Right. Yeah. So you could see if you go up, we'll mm -hmm. show the 75. Mm -hmm. So you see here, $75,000. And then you scroll down and you say, yes, your taxes would be $27,759 if you do a $75,000 conversion mm -hmm. versus when you go to the left, $10,651 if you did nothing, okay? Mm -hmm. And that would keep you in the 12% tax bracket versus moving up to the 22% tax bracket. And then like Jen saying, you could show them all mm -hmm. these other things, state taxes, mm -hmm. Medicare or surcharges, like you know, line by line, you can show them how they're affected, um, how it affect those credits, the mm -hmm. MAGI credits, right? All that showing to you. So you're basically, instead of doing back of the envelope calculations and guessing and saying, oh, well, I think we could do 22 or I think we could do 24. Like this will show you the impact of that in like every critical area so that you're not forgetting about the NIT. You're not forgetting about the Medicare tax. You know, it's all laid out for you there and you can make better decisions. Yep, and then quickly, I'll just show you at the top, um, you could print the report, which is what we do and how we would attach it for the client. So you could show every row. We like to skip the empty rows because it just takes up so many pages. There's not really a point. So you'll see it prints out a nice PDF for you showing everything you wanted to show. 
And this is typically what we attach to the email for the client. And we like to highlight just to bring their eye to it, you know, the difference in total income in the cases, obviously the Roth conversion amount, total tax and all that. So it's prints this very nice report for you as well. Was that helpful? Go, I'm Laura? going with yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was great. Okay, next question for you. Is there a minimum asset or income amount that you do tax analysis with? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. And the whole point of this webinar is to say, you know, I would avoid thinking of it like that because it's so efficient, uh, this tool, your ability to provide services, that if we start making arbitrary um, like rules around it, then people are going to be left off. And I'll give you a good example is, oh, you're like, this client's in the 10 or 12% tax bracket. So like, I shouldn't be doing this work for them. Well, the client that's in the 10 or 12% tax bracket might have a $4 million IRA and RMDs have not kicked in yet. And they could really benefit by you doing some IRA distribution planning, Roth conversions, even if they're at that 10 or 12% tax bracket with like just an 80 or $90,000 income. So like, I, I think we want to be more thoughtful and intentional about this and shed the old paradigms, which is what I've been trying to talk about, right? Those old paradigms of we only do this for A clients. We only do this for a client that's a million dollars of income. Well, that client that's in the 10 or 12% tax bracket with $80,000 of income could, could have a $400,000 RMD down the road if you don't act now. And so it's really a different way of thinking, having the software, because it enables you to analyze, analyze things and think differently um, and provide those services. And so I would tell you, no, we don't have those hard, fast rules. We don't. Okay, we have a very specific question on traditional 401k and Roth 401k. Yeah, I see that. Um, from David. So if I hear correctly, if you have somebody in the traditional and the Roth, why would you need to take an RMD? Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not talking about somebody who's still working. I'm saying that somebody is retired, they typically would roll that 401k over to you. But now that, um, you know, like a year or two ago, when they aligned the treatment of Roth 401ks with Roth IRAs, we were having a more difficult time getting clients to roll over the Roth 401k to a Roth IRA because they're like, hey, I can keep it in my plan. It's been there for years. I feel comfortable with it in my plan. And it's cheaper than paying your 1% fee, right? And so they're like, and now I don't have RMDs. But now I'm telling you that a lot of those clients have some type of hybrid 401k where it's part Roth and part traditional because years ago it was only traditional. Then they started doing Roth. And I'm saying for those situations, then that client still is going to have an issue keeping it in their employer plan and they're going to need to roll it out to you so they don't have RMDs in the 10-year rule. Uh, we have another question, Claudia, do we have to show the software to our BD compliance? Absolutely. What I will tell you is that years ago, some of the uh, BDs would fight um, Holista Plan because it was new, it was innovative, and now they're all falling into line. And so almost all of the large BDs and custodians that I'm seeing um, have approved Holista Plan. And so, um, yes, it has to be run by them, but I would be very optimistic that it's not going to be a problem. And also, um, list plan in the settings, you can add uh, the disclosure to, to be on all the reports when you go to print them. So that's what we have to do, and it's very easy to do. And the other thing I would add to that is if we're not currently approved, please intro us to your compliance team, and we're more than happy to work with them. And how you say it to your compliance team is that all of your colleagues from other firms are doing this, and you're going to lose business, and you're going to lose opportunities. Um, and by the way, I think there's liability if you're not providing these services. You know, times are changing and there is a huge RIA that is getting sued and you can look it up. There's a huge RIA getting sued because they promised to provide tax planning um, and they didn't. And so the tides are turning where this is going to be the standard more and more, not the exception. Mm -hmm. I have someone, David, asking, but to confirm the RMD is just on the traditional 401k or is it also on the Roth? My reading of this is it's on everything. 
I think what happened here is the IRS does not have the tools to distinguish between to distinguish between a Roth 401k and a traditional 401k within a hybrid 401k setup, which again is my terminology. They don't have the tools to figure it out. The technology is so bad. So they just said, if it is not a separate Roth 401k, we're going to treat the whole thing as a traditional 401k. So that's that's the problem we have right now. The last one I just want to call out was somebody who said, P.S., thank you for all the amazing webinars. We've transferred the way we help our clients with Holistic Plan and with the Masterclass webinars. So, yeah, thank you. I think that means a lot. It's a really nice way to end the webinar. So we're right at five o'clock. We like to start on time. We like to end on time. So thank you, everybody, for joining us today. It's been a really great one hour with you. Thank you for engaging. Thank you, Debbie and Jennifer. You guys, as always, absolutely crushed it. So, so happy to be working with you. And we will send out a recap email with a link to the recording and then a link to the slides. So thank you, everybody. And we'll see you next time. Bye, folks. Thank you.